All right, let's talk about um, randomized trials, everything you need to know in six minutes. Uh, thank you to Jamie Fritz for producing this video. Um, so in general, uh, clinical trials are either pragmatic or explanatory. Um, for pragmatic trials, they evaluate the effectiveness of some intervention in routine care, in so-called real life settings. Contrast that with an explanatory trial, um, these evaluate the efficacy, uh, often of drugs, in ideal conditions. So if you were planning a study and you were trying to get your new drug approved by Health Canada or the FDA, you would definitely aim for an explanatory trial. Uh, but most trials aren't trying to do that. So for a pragmatic trial, there's generally um, relatively few exclusion criteria and um, it includes patients often who are hospitalized um, to reflect sort of real life conditions, but it also can include non-hospitalized individuals. But the idea here is that there's very few exclusion criteria to increase generalizability. In contrast, as you can see by this uh, robust looking stick figure, um, explanatory trials are often conducted in relatively healthy uh, patient populations. And often uh, these explanatory trials include a placebo uh, as well as the drug. In addition, explanatory trials are typically blinded so the patient doesn't know what he or she is getting. Um, ditto for the doctors, ditto for the researchers. And this blinding helps to really minimize any form of bias. So extremely powerful design. Let's give you an example of a pragmatic trial. So uh, I was one of the leads for this study. Uh, we included patients admitted into hospital with COVID-19. Um, there were very few exclusion criteria to be included in the study, and patients were randomized to prone positioning, uh, that's laying on their stomach while in bed, compared to uh, standard of care, which is patients lying on their back. Uh, another great example of a pragmatic trial um, was led by Dr. Michelle Schulzberg. Uh, this also included patients hospitalized with COVID-19. Again, very few restrictions, didn't include a placebo arm, and in that study, patients randomized to high-dose versus low-dose heparin. So now that we've sort of talked about, um, in broad strokes, the types of trials within a pragmatic trial um, or within an explanatory trial, we have to decide, all right, so how are we going to randomize individuals? The most common approach is an individual randomized trial. As that name suggests, each person might get randomized to drug A or drug B. Um, and as a result, you have these two groups of individuals that look almost identical, uh, except one got drug A and one got drug B. You could contrast that with a cluster randomized trial. So instead of randomizing an individual, we're randomizing clusters of people. What do I mean by clusters of people? So maybe you're randomizing an entire hospital to intervention A and another hospital to intervention B, uh, for example. And um, as a result, it's much more efficient right? Uh, it, it's much easier to um, achieve and complete these studies, but there's a drawback. You know, maybe all of these hospitals just happened to care for older adults, and all of these hospitals in green uh, tended to care for younger adults. As a result, the two clusters might not be balanced, uh, and that can definitely affect uh, bias and your study's results. So as a result, you generally want to have a lot of clusters, at least 20, if not more. Uh, next up are crossover trials. For a crossover trial, um, the individuals randomized, but essentially they'd get randomized to drug A, there's a washout period, and then they get randomized to drug B. Uh, these are relatively rare to see these in medicine, so if you're a bit confused by the design, uh, don't worry about it, and it only works for certain drugs that aren't going to last for a long time um, in somebody's system. If you thought that was confusing, this is even more confusing. So for factorial tr uh, trials, rather than randomizing each patient to one treatment, you're randomizing each patient to two treatments. So as a result, um, the number of different combinations is four. So you have four different factors or levels. So you could have a group of patients that got randomized to aspirin plus uh, beta carotene. This is one of the most famous factorial designs, um, aspirin or a placebo for beta carotene, uh, placebo plus beta carotene, or two placebos. So you have four different groups um, as a result. So this can make things relatively efficient because you're comparing multiple things uh, at once. All right, let's summarize all of this. So in an individual randomized trial, surprise, surprise, 
each individual patient is randomized. Uh, it's a great approach, but the drawback is it's expensive. Uh, it's expensive in terms of time and money because you're going out there and randomizing each individual person. A cluster randomized trial, you're, you're um, instead randomizing groups of individuals. An entire hospital gets this drug and another hospital does not. Um, the drawback of that, of course, is that if the individual hospitals don't have similar patient characteristics and who they care for, um, then that can lead to bias in your study findings. Uh, so as a result, you want to have lots of clusters. Uh, crossover trials, um, individuals actually receive the same two treatments, but the sequence in which they receive them is randomized. Uh, again, these are pretty uncommon to see in medicine. Uh, factorial design, um, in this case, you might want to look at two drugs. So each person could get up to two drugs uh, compared to control. Uh, the drawback, these are confusing to understand. And then we talked about pragmatic trials. So this is looking at the effectiveness of an intervention in routine clinical practice. I would say most pragmatic trials are either randomizing individuals or clusters. Um, and generally, these are sort of the most simple to do. Um, they're still challenging though. And then explanatory trials. Uh, this is done in a highly controlled setting. Often it's placebo controlled. Um, often there, there's blinding. These are very commonly drug for uh, done for new drugs if you're trying to get them approved by FDA or Health Canada. Um, and almost always, these are individual randomized trials. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, uh, like and share the video. Have a great day. Bye.